So for this extended version body of the Beefcake Hopper, we're going to start with a few thread wraps on the end of a straight shank streamer hook that I've clipped the eye off of. And we're going to come in with a 1 8 inch wide strip of foam. The hopper that we're going to tie in this situation is going to be chartreuse. So I'm going to catch this strip with just two or three loose wraps. And then I'm going to take the back end and I'm going to take a couple wraps around this hook shank. Now for this size hopper, this is going to be a size 10. I'm only looking to create two segments for the extended body portion. And so each of those segments is about an eighth of an inch wide. I need about a quarter of an inch of foam wrapped back here. So I'm going to snip that off. This is going to stay. This is going to be used as an attachment to help us attach to the front hook. So at this point here, I'm going to come in and on the top and the bottom of the back part that we just wrapped up, I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of zap gap. And that's going to help my cause here as I bring in these two pieces of foam. So I want the back of this piece about matched up, maybe just a little bit past. I'm just going to catch it with a thread wrap here. Cinch it, pinch it down, one or two wraps. Rotate that sucker upside down. Come in with the same matching piece. We're going to repeat that same process. Just catch it by the end here. I'm going to squeeze those, cinch and pinch, get about three or four good wraps down, and then I'm going to return that thread over the top in the foam here. So what I'm looking to do here is I'm looking to create um, a couple more small, about eighth inch wide segments. By cinching and pinching, get three or four wraps down, rotate that, catch the top part of it, and repeat that same process. So I'm going to squeeze, cinch and pinch, three or four wraps. We're going to try to get one more little segment out of this. This back part here is a little bit longer than the one eighth that I want, but that's not a big deal because we're going to trim that when I finish it. So squeeze there. Cinch and pinch, rotate it. One more round. Catch that, cinch and pinch it. Throw down three or four wraps. So this is what it looks like here. This is what we're left with. I'm going to half hitch this just a couple times. Snip that thread, and I'm going to come in with a little bit of zap gap where I snipped it. Hit that so that stays in place. And at that point in time, we're going to slide that off our extended body hook. So I'm going to come in before I actually do anything with this. I'm going to take uh, that end that's a little bit longer than I want. And very simply, I'm just going to trim it off. Trim it on that side. Snip it on that side. And a little bit there. And that's more what I'm looking for. So take that at this point. Extended streamer pin comes out. I'm going to take this size 10. This is a bronze $24.99. And what I'm looking for here, it doesn't really matter. You can deem whatever top bottom you want to be the top or the bottom. So I'm going to say this is my bottom. And I want to take this hook and I want to come in from the inside of the body. Try to come through the middle of that foam there. And ideally you want to catch this so that the tip of your hook comes out about there. So about in the middle, just in front of your last segment. So slide that through. Slide this into the vise here. Up it down and then I'm just going to slide that foam down the hook shank. So at this point I'll come back with my thread and I'm going to cover this whole hook shank with thread. So I'm going to go back to the bend of the hook, return it forward all the way up behind the eye of the hook. Stop it about there, come back here and then I'm going to coat that hook shank with a zap gap. The big idea there is that I don't want this pattern to rotate on me once I have it tied, I think I shorted it there a little bit, so I'm going to go a little bit more. So I'm going to take this core piece here, and this is going to be my attachment. I want to slide this up so that it starts on the straight part of the hook shank. And very simply, I'm going to hold that down, and I'm going to catch it with my thread, and just work it back. At that point, I'll just take the foam, snip it off. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to repeat this segment creation process. So I want to start right here. Nose is right there in that little crevice. I'm going to rotate it upside down. 
and I'm going to create another segment right underneath there. Same idea, cinch and pinch, three or four wraps, rotate it right side up. I'm going to take a little bit of zappa gap and I'm going to hit it right there where I'm going to bring the top piece in. And same idea there. I'm going to catch that. Cinch and pinch, three or four wraps. And on the top of this segment here, I'm going to tie in my wing material. And what I've done is I've taken a strip of thin skin, uh, about as wide as the hook gap, cut it to a little bit of a taper off the end. And what we'll do is we want to make sure when we tie that in that it extends eh, about maybe three sixteenths of an inch off the back of that fly. So we'll take that, catch it with a couple wraps. At that same point there, I'm going to also tie in my rear legs. Now since this is a smaller size, I use just a single strand of medium round rubber, chartreuse in this case. For the larger patterns, once I get up to like a size 8 and a size 6 with this hopper, I'll double strand it together to give that leg a little bit, a little thicker profile and to, to sit out away from the body a little bit farther. So tie that in on that side, bring it back. I want the joint on this leg to hit about the butt end of the abdomen. It's kind of my, my index point for that. Get another couple wraps around it. Now that leg's not where I want it, it's kicking back toward me. So very simply I'm going to take it and I'm just going to rotate it and spin it until I like the position of it. And I like that position. So I'm going to take it here, I'm going to return that thread back to the hook shank. Now this next part is optional. Um, I'm going to pull the legs to the inside of the fly and I'm actually going to secure the excess to the shank. And the reason why I do that is because from underneath, as you viewed by the fish, which I think is pretty important, uh, it's going to create a really smooth, seamless transition into the body. And that's important to me. Uh, optional, obviously, you could cut them there. You could just throw a little super glue on the extension point. But I like to cut them. I want that smooth transition. Uh, I've been in enough experiences on heavily fished water where fish see so many hopper patterns throughout the season that a little difference like this can be the difference between that big fish snubbing your fly and actually taking it. So once I've got that there, I'm going to come up and I'm about uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch behind the eye of the hook. And I'm going to grab that piece of foam, pull it down. When you look at this thoracic segment, you want it to be a little bit larger than your abdomen segments. If you look at a grasshopper from underneath, you notice that that thoracic segment is larger. It's not the same as the abdomen. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to clip this, and when I come in on the sides of the head, I want to kind of square it off. I want that blocky hopper head look. So I'll do that, and then before I pull this top piece down, I'm going to put a little zappy gap there, just for the sake of durability. Lock in my body a little bit more. So I'll pull the foam forward. Cinch that down. A couple wraps. Make sure that the profile from below matches with the head above. I'll pull that wing over the top. Catch it with a wrap. Thin skin can kind of lump up on you, so I like to catch it and then give it a nice tug to get it to where I want to. Trim it off even with the head there. And then on each side there, I'm going to come in and I'm going to tie in my legs. So I've pre-knotted these before. I like to hit the joints with a little UV cure just to hold them in place. To keep them from unknotting as they, uh, you know, progressively take fish and the teeth and the bites and all that good stuff. Trim those off just a skosh. Now I'm going to rotate this right side up. I'm going to come in with my 1 8 inch wide of indicator foam. Put just a touch of zappa gap right on the top there. I want the front of this foam to about meet the front of the head. Cinch it down. Get a couple wraps over it. I'm going to come in and snip it off. About a quarter inch off the top of the head. Throw in a whip finish or two. Go ahead and snip that thread. Now the last part here, the finishing of this is optional. Uh, I see it as a critical point for all my terrestrial patterns in being successful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a little bit of UV Cure Clear. I'm going to coat the bottom of this and then I'm going to brush it out just a little bit. 
And the bonus of that is number one, it adds a little bit of durability. Number two, it adds a little bit of a reflective sheen. If you look at larger terrestrials, you'll see on the bottom and on the top, they're exoskeletons because they're made with a material called chitin, have a little bit of flash and a little bit of reflectivity to them.